Hello friends, this video on chemical bonding part 35 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 34. So we have this x axis the intermediate axis which is the form and not form a sigma bond. Let's see this. So if you talk about 1s, 1s, it will always be a sigma. S and P is always sigma. Now since x is my intermediate axis, this is my Px. Px. So Px, Px forms sigma bond. So this is my Py and Py. So if you see this Py, Py forms a pi bond. So this forms a pi bond. And S always forms sigma bond. So this is all sigma, this is pi. So the question is which is not sigma? The third one is not sigma. Why? Because you can see that if x is my integral axis, p by p by forms a pi bond. Also p z p z also because it's my x is my integral axis, p z p z also forms a pi bond. Which hybrid orbitals are used by carbon in the following molecules? CS3, CS3. In this case, I think sp3 hybrid is used by both carbon. We have seen this. The next one is this CS3, CH, CS2. Right? So the moment you have a single bond, it is sp3. So this one is sp3. Double bond. So both are sp2. Let's take this CH3. Then we have CH2. Then we have OH. Both are single bond, so both are sp3. We'll take this CH3 COH. CH3 COH. Correct. This is a double bond. So this is sp2. Single bond sp3. Then these are the CH3 COH similar to this. This is a double bond. So it is sp2. Single bond sp. It is simple. Just by looking at the number of bonds, we can tell it is sp2 or sp3. So the question is what do you understand by lone pair and bond pair? Give example. The shared electron pair present in the bonded atoms are called bond pair. And the electrons which are not participating in bonding are called lone pair. For example, if you see my water, these two pair of electrons are not parting in bond. So they are my lone pair. These electrons are participating in bond. So they are my bond pair. Correct. Explain the formation of hydrogen molecules in the basement of balance bond theory. So the way it works is there are two hydrogen molecules, let's suppose this and this hydrogen molecule. This comes near to each other. And when it comes, more forces are developed. This is the force between, this is, let's suppose, nucleus 1, nucleus 2. This is my electron 1, electron 2. So the new force developed between the nucleus 1 and electron 2. Attractive force, nucleus 2, electron 1, attractive force, and there are repulsive force between nucleus 1 and nucleus 2 and electron 1 and electron 2. But overall, the, elect, uh, the attractive force is more than repulsive force, and the whole atom is stable, whole molecule is stable. And this is the graph we have. So, if it is far apart, there is no energy. The moment comes at this point, it has very low energy, and then if you try to squeeze more, the energy increases. This is the point where it has minimum energy and it forms a bond. What is the importance condition required for linear combination of atomic orbitals to form molecular orbitals? The first is that they should have uh, the atomic orbitals should have nearly or same energy. Right, and 
overlap has to be maximum. So nearly same energy and overlap has to be maximum. So use the molecular orbital theory to explain why B2 doesn't exist. So B2, if you see, then uh, atom, I mean the the number of electrons is eight. Right, the electronic configuration will be one s two, sigma one s two, one s two, star two s two. So find the bond order, three one by two, molecular orbital four, minus anti bonding, sorry bonding minus anti bonding four, that is zero. So the bonding order is zero. That means it doesn't exist. You have to compare the stability of the following species and indicate their magnetic properties. It is a long question. O2 will have 16 electrons, O2 plus 15, O2 minus 17, and O2 minus 2, 18 electrons. Right? So if you want to write the electronic configuration for O2, it will be like this: 16 it has. So we'll start with sigma 1 s, sigma 1 star, and this. So it will be sigma 1 s 2 electron. Sigma star 1 s 2 electron, 4 is done. Sigma 2 s 2 electron, 2 s star is 2 electron, 8 is done. 8 more to go. So then we'll have 2p. Sigma 2p 2, then we have pi 2p. It can have 4 actually. 2p x will have 2, and pi 2p y will have 8. So we have till now 2, 4, 6, 8. 10, 14. So we'll have uh, next, then we have uh, pi 2p. pi 2p x will have 1 and pi 2p y will have 1. Right? Because they are they are 2 x and y in the same level, so 1 and will die. So let's talk about the bond order. Will be 1 by 2 bonding minus anti-bonding. So bonding is how many? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, they are 10, anti-bonding is 2, 4, 6, that is 2, magnetic character, they are 2 unpaired, so it is Diamond. We talk about O2 plus. Similarly, you'll find for O2 plus, if you solve, you'll get bond order to be 1 by 2 into ten minus five. That is 2.5. Similarly, O2 minus, if you find, you'll find bond order to be 1.5, and O2 minus, you'll find bond order to be 1. So, with this bond order, we can find the stability. So, this guy is more stable, O2 plus maximum 2.5 bond order, and then we'll have O2, then we'll have O2 minus. And then we'll have O2 minus 2. This you can solve. Just you have to find the bond order for all these. We'll get the answer. What is the significance of plus and minus sign in representing the molecular orbitals? So plus is a positive wave function. As I told, the orbital is nothing but a wave function. Negative is nothing but a negative wave function. That's all. Describe hybridization in case of PCL5. So let's do this PCL5. So PCL phosphorus will have Ne3S2, 3P3. So let's, and we have uh, drawn this since the d orbitals are also involved in this. So we have drawn this d orbital plan. 
this is my phosphorus it looks like so 3s2 and 3p 3 electrons there so 1s moves from here to here 3d forms sp3 hybridization so similarly if you see this phosphorus it goes for sp3 hybridization so we have five different orbitals same uh, energy right and each will get one closing attached here this is my phosphorus okay now the question is why are axial bonds longer as compared to equatorial bonds so if you see the axial bonds these are my axial bonds actually right they suffer more repulsion and thus they are longer see this these suffer more repulsion so they are longer these are my equatorial these three are my equatorial bonds what does mean by bond order calculate the bond order of n as i told bond order in terms of uh, Lewis theory is nothing but the number of uh, chemical bonds, right? In terms of Lewis theory, and in the molecule that have resonance, the bond order did not be integer. It can be one point five or something. So, in molecular orbital theory, defines the bond order as nothing but half the difference between the number of electron present in bonding and anti-bonding orbitals. Correct. So let's find the bond order for N2 using this molecular orbital theory. So for N2, my uh, this will be 1s2, anti-bonding 1s2, 2s2, anti-bonding 2s2, 2px, pi 2py and sigma. 2pz. So bond order will be 1 by 2 bonding minus anti bonding. Bonding is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 10 minus anti bonding is 4. Like cross. This becomes 3. So bond order for N2 is 3. So we see N2 has triple bond. That's that. Correct. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.